The elision of the MV Dolly with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore on the 26th of March, 2024, was a tragic event that killed six people and directly and indirectly impacted thousands. The 984-foot vessel carrying more than 4,600 containers lost power and struck a pier holding the bridge that spanned the Patapsco River. The incident halted inbound cargo traffic at a major American port for cars and trucks and exports of coal. Under OPA 90, U.S. Coast Guard regulations mandate that all vessels entering U.S. waters have a named salvage and marine firefighting responder. Resolve Marine Salvers were aboard the MV Dolly within hours of the incident. Nearly 30 truckloads of equipment were mobilized from across the United States in 48 hours. The primary objective of the response was to clear the channel. Resolve Marine's primary objectives focused on crew safety, fire prevention, damage control, vessel stabilization, bridge debris, and cargo removal. Phase 1 involved flooding the forward void tanks and setting anchors to prevent the vessel from moving into the tidal current or floating when the weight of the cargo and debris were removed. Diving and shipboard damage assessments were conducted to determine structural integrity. Phase 2 involved removing containers, including those at heights of more than 120 feet, planning and execution of a controlled demolition, and stabilizing and refloating the vessel. Phase 3 involved crews removing additional containers and debris and the road that lay on the bow. The vessel was prepared for transit to a shipyard for additional repairs. Chemical hazards consisted of known, unknown and mixed cargoes that leaked from containers and tanks. A total of 56 hazmat containers had the potential to create dangerous conditions through exposure, decomposition, or chemical reactions. Hazmat mitigation involved research, segregation, processing, and waste stream profiling, all required acceptance by the states of Maryland and Virginia, the Environmental Protection Agency, and disposal facilities. When the shipping containers and chemical tanks were crushed, non-hazardous and hazardous materials mixed together. Sulfonic acid soaked into paper, soybeans, and untanned deerskin cargoes. High concentrations of deadly hydrogen sulfide accumulated as soybean cargo deteriorated over time. Sulfonic acid reacted with metals inside some containers, creating pockets of explosive hydrogen. Risk assessments determined the level of personal protective equipment, respiratory protection, and other hazard controls required to work safely in high hazard conditions. Resolve Marine partnered with hazmat response specialists, environmental engineers, marine chemists and other subject matter experts to safely analyze, remove, and dispose of all hazardous cargo. Marine salvage operations are inherently hazardous undertakings and require specialized experience, certifications, and training. Over the course of six months, at times employing over 150 people, there was not a single accident that required immediate care beyond first aid. Our safety record is an important milestone that demonstrates the training, teamwork, and awareness of highly dynamic operations. New obstacles and challenges emerged each day, some unexpectedly and sometimes simultaneously. Hazard recognition and the application of hazard controls was a mission shared by every responder on the Resolve Marine team. Unified Command assembled the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Maryland Transportation Authority, and other responders and contractors. The U.S. Navy coordinated salvage operations. Salvage crews included marine firefighters, rope access technicians, environmental engineers, marine hazmat specialists, salvage masters and salvage officers, naval architects, safety officers, divers, barge masters, equipment and logistics teams, and project coordinators. Resolve Marine's CEO reviewed plans for the day at 0600 and at 1730. His brief covered what was planned and what took place each day. All contributed to the collective preparation, organization, prioritization, and execution of the job. Resolve Marine taps into a global network of resource partners that bring specialized equipment and expertise. For the MV Dolly job, Resolve Marine sourced additional tugs, deck barges, and crane barges. We tapped engineering experts, cutting equipment and personnel, and waste management specialists. 
Four different port facilities received containers. Other facilities were used to collect containers and debris. The safest way to remove the bridge lodged on the bow was carefully analyzed. Cutting something under tension isn't controlled and is more dangerous when working at heights and where weather conditions are a factor. Demolition was the safest option. Crews filled the forward ballast tanks and placed anchors off the stern to keep the MV Dolly firmly in place. Specialists installed hundreds of shape charges on the span laying on the bow that would precisely cut the bridge at the time of detonation. The blueprint for the controlled demolition required reviews by the Unified Command and approvals from county, state, and federal officials. Planning, preparation of the structure, and approvals for the detonation took weeks. The demolition took place in less than a minute. All went according to plan. The MV Dolly was refloated 55 days after the elision, allowing all shipping channels and the port to fully reopen. At 0128, the Port of Baltimore came to a standstill. 30,000 daily commuters were disrupted. Global media coverage ran 24-7. The proximity of high-profile politicians and government officials from Washington, D.C. included President Biden. Hundreds working under unified command were the best of the best. Resolve Marine's professionalism stood out. We assembled a team of leaders, experts, crew, and partners from all over the world. We made sure our crews felt valued, safe, and prepared for the unexpected. Everyone wore multiple hats and played different roles, including the crew member who delivered lunch every day. The MV Dolly Refloat was an extraordinary team effort.